The birth of the sun, a 4.6 billion year journey. Four and a half billion years ago, there was no sun, no earth, no warmth to banish the cosmic cold, only a silent, frigid cloud of hydrogen and dust drifting aimlessly through the Milky Way. Then, a nearby giant star reached the end of its life. It died in a spectacular supernova, a detonation so powerful it briefly outshone entire galaxies. Its shockwave raced through space at thousands of kilometers per second until it struck that quiet cloud. That single event set the universe's most patient sculptor, gravity, into action. Matter collapsed, pressure mounted, and in that collapse lay the seeds of everything oceans, forests, continents, and eventually, us. This is the story of how darkness became light, how a random patch of gas became a star, and how the sun's 4.6 billion year journey is, in truth, our own. The sun was born inside a giant molecular cloud, stretching across 65 light years of space, frozen at minus 260 degrees Celsius, mostly hydrogen and helium, but sprinkled with dust grains, carbon, silicon, iron, the ashes of ancient stars long gone. Imagine flying in a jet at top speed. It would take three weeks to cross just the fragment of the cloud that became our solar system. Outwardly still, inwardly restless, every atom tugged on its neighbors. Left alone, the cloud might have lingered in silence for millions of years, but the universe rarely leaves anything alone. The shockwave from that supernova slammed into the cloud, compressing one knot of gas a thousand times the mass of Earth. Meteorites still carry isotopic fingerprints of that moment, proof that a dying star gave life to our own. Once collapse began, it was unstoppable. Over 100,000 years, the knot shrank and spun faster, flattening into a swirling protoplanetary disk. At its heart, a protostar swelled, glowing hot from gravitational compression. Like an ice skater pulling in her arms, the spin accelerated. Jets of plasma burst from the poles, sweeping away dust. In the disk beyond, grains collided and clumped. Snowflakes to pebbles, pebbles to boulders, boulders to planetesimals. These were the seeds of worlds. The sun-to-be was not yet burning with fusion. Its core smoldered, but true ignition still waited for the right pressure and heat. The turning point came when the core reached 10 million Kelvin. At that temperature, protons, normally repelling each other, collided with such force that they fused. Nuclear fire caught. At first, unstable. Then, steady. Gravity's inward crush balanced fusion's outward push. Hydrostatic equilibrium. In that moment, the sun became a star. From then on, every second, it has converted four million tons of matter into energy the equivalent of 10 billion hydrogen bombs. That energy begins in the core as high-energy gamma rays. Photons scatter endlessly through the radiative zone, taking nearly 100,000 years to reach the convection zone, where boiling plasma carries them upward in a single month. Once they escape the surface, they need just eight minutes to reach Earth. Every sunrise is the finale of a journey that began before humanity even existed. And through helioseismology, Scientists have learned that the sun vibrates like a colossal instrument. By studying these oscillations, its hidden music, we can map its layers, revealing the flows and turbulence deep within. The young sun was dimmer than today, but ferociously active. Its winds tore through the solar system, clearing gas and dust, locking in the final shapes of planets. Even now, the sun is restless. Magnetic tornadoes twist upward tens of thousands of miles. Sunspots, cooler dark patches pepper its surface. Solar flares and coronal mass ejections erupt with terrifying force, hurling billions of tons of plasma into space at millions of miles per hour. When these storms reach Earth, they paint the skies with shimmering auroras, green and violet curtains of light. But they can also cripple modern life. In 1859, the Carrington event set telegraph wires ablaze. In 1989, a storm plunged Quebec into blackout. Today, similar storms could disable GPS, disrupt satellites, and knock out power grids worldwide. The sun is vast, 100 Earths wide, able to swallow nearly 600 Earths inside. It contains 99.8% of the solar system's mass. Its gravity bends space itself, 
binding every planet, moon, comet, and asteroid into orbit. At the heart of the Sun's violence lies its magnetic dynamo. The Sun spins faster at the equator than at the poles. Plasma churns chaotically. Magnetic field lines twist, knot, and snap, releasing bursts of energy, flares, and CMEs. NASA's Parker Solar Probe has flown closer to the Sun than any spacecraft in history, skimming the corona. It discovered switchbacks, sudden reversals in the solar wind, direct evidence of magnetic reconnection. These may explain why the corona, the Sun's outer atmosphere, is mysteriously hotter than its surface, millions of degrees versus thousands. Meanwhile, the Solar Dynamics Observatory, launched in 2010, has given us continuous, high-resolution views of the Sun across many wavelengths. These images revealed storms in astonishing detail, transforming solar science. Together, Parker, SDO, and ESA's Solar Orbiter show us a star in constant upheaval, a colossal engine of magnetism and plasma. The Sun is not constant. Every 11 years, its magnetic field flips. Sunspots rise and fall in number. Solar maximum brings storms. Solar minimum, calm. In 2025, Solar Cycle 25 is peaking stronger than expected. Already, powerful X-class flares erupt regularly. Scientists warn, the odds of extreme storms are higher now than at any time in decades. And while monitoring has improved, the truth remains. A storm as powerful as the Carrington event today could cripple the modern world for months or even years. We stand in awe of the sun's beauty, but also at the mercy of its storms. The sun is not just a star, it is our lifeline. Without its gravity, the planets would drift into interstellar night. Without its magnetic shield, cosmic rays would sterilize Earth. Without its fusion furnace, there would be no photosynthesis, no oceans, no life. The calcium in your bones, the oxygen in your breath, the iron in your blood, all once forged in earlier stars, scattered in supernovae, swept into the nebula that became the sun and Earth. When you feel sunlight on your skin, you are touching photons born in the sun's core, billions of years ago. You are, quite literally, made of starlight. But nothing lasts forever. In about 6.5 billion years, the sun will exhaust its hydrogen fuel. Its core will contract, its outer layers will swell. The sun will become a red giant, engulfing Mercury, Venus, and Earth. Eventually, it will shed its outer layers, glowing faintly as a planetary nebula. What remains will collapse into a white dwarf, a dense ember, no larger than Earth, but with half the sun's mass. It will cool for trillions of years, fading slowly into cosmic silence. By then, humanity may have spread to other stars, but the sun's story will still be written in every atom of our bodies. From a frozen, silent cloud to a blazing thermonuclear beacon. From chaos to creation. From dust to life. The sun's 4.6 billion year journey is not just the tale of a star, it is our story. Without it, there would be no earth, no forests, no oceans, no you, no me. This is my split mind, where curiosity meets the unknown. If this journey lit even a spark of wonder, share it and remember, we are all, quite literally, made of starlight.